Bitcoin. Let's talk Bitcoin. Not a whole lot to update you guys on Bitcoin here. So Bitcoin again, guys, as we can see, is just essentially pulled back off of this recent high pivot. You can see this trend line. I probably haven't talked to you guys much about this trend line. I do want to show you why, again, this is resistance. It's only, it's not a huge resistance level. I want to be clear on that. But what we can see here is if you look at this base right here and this little area, there was kind of a sideways up, down, sideways, and then it broke down. And so essentially we've come back to that level right in here, and that's just short-term resistance. Again, I would just say this, is that any pullback to 32, 31,000 is a buying opportunity. As long as we stay here, the risks are to the upside, meaning you can go further to the upside because that spot ETF, you just don't know when it's going to be approved. When it's, when it's approved, it's probably going to pop. We'll watch very closely there. This is the chart of gold. So gold, again, you know the dollar goes down. What happens to gold? Gold tends to move up. Look at this move on gold. Big move, initially kind of flush, but then surge to the upside. Beautiful move on the intraday. So the big thing is here is if we flip over to the daily chart, what do we know, right? So number one, we know that gold was overall consolidating. We had that big move. And again, this is the beauty of the charts, right? So we had this general channel. We had the monster move that broke the channel, broke out of the channel. We kind of went up into resistance up here. We then began to pull back. And what did I say to you guys? I said, as long as we don't get below this area here, anything here is bullish. Well, sure enough, we're starting to make a move. In addition, if you take this pivot high and draw a trend line flat across, you actually got that low. So you can see that there was some support where we've seen this turnaround. All right. So again, watching that very closely, let's watch and see here. Do we push up? This is going to be your resistance on gold right above 2000. If we break that, I think we go to the all-time highs. I actually think we could go to the all-time highs on gold and retest that double, triple top, maybe even by year end. We'll have to watch and see. But I do think that is a possibility. All right, silver. I promised you yesterday, guys, we would look at some of these metals. Let's look at silver. Silver is also having a push up. I love this silver chart. It's not as strong as gold, and I say that because gold has already broken out of this downward channel, right? So again, silver has not, so you have to respect that. But having said that, if we look at the chart here, we can clearly see you hit off the low end of the channel, you went up, and now you've been bull flagging. So what does this mean? Nice move on silver today. Let's watch and see it. Can we break out on silver? Can we test the upper range of that channel? And then can we break out to the upside. But again, nice bullish pattern, silver beginning to react to that technical analysis level there or pattern formation. Hey, Crypto Street investors, get ready for a wild ride as we dive into the Bitcoin halving bonanza and the dollar's dilemma. It's a financial roller coaster you won't want to miss. Let's get started. Hold on to your wallets, Crypto Street investors. The Bitcoin halving extravaganza is approaching. It's about to shake up the crypto world. Happening every 210,000 blocks, this fourth halving is like Bitcoin's birthday party. It cuts the new coin issuance rate by 50%. Glassnode, the on-chain wizards, predict the grand event on April 23, 2024, just 158 days away. And guess what? Historically, Bitcoin's done a victory dance with over 400% returns in the year following previous halvings. But remember, past performance is not a crystal ball into the future. But wait, there's more. Glassnode's got its eyes on the dance floor, specifically the illiquid supply dance. Picture this, illiquid supply expanding faster than a Tesla on ludicrous mode, currently at 180,000 BTC per quarter. That's 2.2 times faster than new issuances. With about 81,000 BTC mined quarterly now, the upcoming halving will shrink it to around 40,000 BTC. Translation, the available supply is doing the limbo at historical lows. It's a bullish ballet for Bitcoin folks. Now let's shift gears to the dollar dilemma drama. The green max on a roller coaster of its own surprising experts by flexing its muscles and reaching new highs against foreign currencies. From 99 to 105 on the US dollar index, the dollar's back in the spotlight. Despite predictions of a 2023 decline, the dollar's throwing a curveball. Why? The US economy's strutting its stuff, growing at a dazzling 4.9%, defying recession fears. But watch out. A strong dollar might rain on the parade for companies like Apple and Disney, impacting profits earned abroad. Hold tight, investors. The dollar is set to be the star for this quarter in early 2024. So what's my playbook? I'm steering clear of US indices like NASDAQ and setting my sights on Japan's Nikkei. Their weak currency is my secret weapon. 
As for crypto, I'm keeping my Bitcoin investments but bracing for some short-term turbulence. The silver lining, rumors of a Bitcoin ETF might throw a lifeline to the prices. And there you have it, crypto street investors. The Bitcoin halving bonanza and the dollar dilemma its the financial circus out here. Now let's continue our enlightening discussion with Gareth Soloway. CPI data just was released at 8.30 a.m. Let's get right into the data. All right, so what I have here is what I showed yesterday. All right, we talked about the previous data, the forecast, and now we have the actual data here. So let's take a look, right? So if we clean this off, we can clearly see previous CPI uh, month over month core. Look at this, 0.3, we forecast or the market forecasted 0.3. It came in at 0.2. Forecast for month over month CPI non-core was forecast at 0.1. It came in at zero, zero folks. No change in these goods, this basket of goods that again are factored into inflation. No change from last month. The markets loved it. Next, we look at year over year numbers. Expectations were 4.1%, came in at 4%. CPI year over year, expected 3.3, came in at 3.2. Literally every single number came in one-tenth better than expected. One-tenth better, one-tenth better, one-tenth better, one-tenth better. What are the markets doing? They are going like that right now. All right, so again, it's almost <laughs> no no offense to the the calculators here, but it's almost as this if as if this was a little contrived here. I'm not saying it is, but again, interesting to see these numbers all beating by a fraction, but enough to give the market a massive push. All right, so what we're gonna do next, folks? Let's take a look here. We're gonna get right into the charts and analyze it accordingly. So what we're gonna flip over is to the Nasdaq 100. Look at the move on the NASDAQ 100 here, pre-market. So huge move up. Initially, yesterday, we basically closed on the markets around 377. We're trading up about $6 on the QQQ. That's a massive move, folks. You're talking close to 2% on the NASDAQ. And again, all the stocks are participating. The big cap, mega cap tech that have already run insane amounts. You have NVIDIA up, Microsoft up, Apple up, Amazon up, all of them across the board. Even Tesla is up this morning. All right, now what do you guys think? So CPI came in lower than expected. So here's a quiz. What do you think we're seeing on the 10-year yield of the dollar? Which direction is the 10-year yield going? Let's take a look. I hope you guys could guess on this one. We are seeing the 10-year yield collapsing to the downside, right? So essentially think about it like this. Inflation is coming down better than expected, which means the Fed has the ability to lower rates sooner. At least that's the way the market's taking it. The Fed can lower rates sooner or quicker. Therefore, yields are coming down. The market, remember the way the correlation works. When yields are coming down like this, what does the market usually do? It usually goes up. And we know from just looking at the NASDAQ 100 that that's exactly what is happening. All right. And what about the dollar? All right, it was markets rallying. Is there an inverse correlation with the dollar usually? So when the dollar goes down, markets go up? And the answer is yes. So we would assume the dollar on an intraday basis is going down. And look at that, folks. That is a big time drop. So again, as the dollar comes down, it also helps the equity markets go up. And that, again, is what we're seeing pre-market. Now, Gold is up. Bitcoin getting a bounce. But again, we know that Bitcoin's trading more on kind of the, the spot ETF stuff. But gold is getting a big bounce. Silver's up big because when the dollar goes down, other commodities tend to go up. Remember, they're traded in terms of dollars. So weaker dollar, higher price in gold. We'll take a look at gold in just one second. Let's go to the S&P 500 here. This is the SPY tracking ETF for the S&P 500. Same result as the NASDAQ. Big, big pop. We are starting to pull back just a shade here. But nonetheless, I mean, that is a huge move, folks. About 1.3 to 1.4% on the S&P right now if the markets were to open this second. All right, now, what we need to do is we need to look at daily charts. So let's flip back to the dailies. We've looked at the intraday. We know what the market is doing on an intraday pre-market basis. Now we need to start looking and saying, okay, well, if the spiders are now trading, we closed yesterday at 440. If we're now trading at 446, that's up here. 
where are the key levels of resistance? Because certainly we are now easily above this down sloping trend line. Now, I will say this. So this is a level that coming into today we knew was pivotal, right? So again, pivot high on the spiders to pivot high here. And this is actually adjusted. So hang on one second. I want to make sure we keep this uh, correct. So let me take away earnings adjusted. There it is. It's, it's essentially the same thing, but I always like to keep it without adjusting for the uh, dividends. Excuse me, the dividends. Either way, the line's essentially the same here as we can see right there. And we were coming right into this level here, all right? So again, right into the level, and we can clearly see pivot to pivot to pivot to pivot. And now we are above this line. Now, the first thing we have to remember is the markets haven't even opened yet. We must see where the markets close because it's possible we could open up here and we could eventually make our way back down to that trend line. Not very likely, I'm going to be honest with you guys, not very likely, but it is always a possibility, especially on options expiration week when weird things can happen because of the institutional involvement. All right, but let's just say we continue to move up. Where is your next level on the SPY? And the answer is we have a gap fill at 450 on the spiders. 450 on the spiders, flipping that over here, we can clearly see this would be your next point of intrigue right at 450, even number right there. So right now, pre-market, we're about 446. So if we continue to move up, gap fill pivot high right here at 450 on the SPY. That's your next level to watch. That wraps up today's crypto news highlights. Stay tuned for more updates, insights, and analysis from the world of cryptocurrencies. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more engaging content.